last Friday we had um, a gentleman who had been recognized by the state and Uganda in general for his kind of exceptional service for, to, towards this country, Uganda. But they were two as they received these medals, the highest for civilians, that's the order of the Nile during Labor Day. As we celebrated workers on the 1st of May 2023, these two men were recognized for exceptionally serving Uganda. We got one of them, that was Dr. Pius Wijirimana. We have the other man this time. Great, as you will hear, he is going to tell us about himself. And his name is Professor Waswa Balunya. He is the principal of the Makere University Business School. We are not only going to talk about <coughs> him, the man, but he will give us his view about the education sector in Uganda and as well, we will talk about MOBS. So, if you are an alumni of MOBS, a student of MOBS, this is the best program for you this week to watch. Professor, we are so glad to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Yes. How are you? How is everything? I'm very well. I, I, I'm, uh, um, I'm okay. Uh, uh, aging gracefully, as it is said. Why do you say gracefully? <laughs> well, I have no problems. Wow. No. I That's don't. nice to hear. Yeah, yes. You don't feel anything? No. You feel very no, okay? I feel okay, yes. What does that take <coughs> for the young man or woman watching? I, I think it takes discipline over the years. Discipline, mm, a lot of discipline in many things. Mm -hmm. First of all, uh, your routine, your routine, your, your eating habits, okay. uh, how you spend your life, mm -hmm. uh, and knowing what you want to do in life. Okay. Yes. You age gracefully. Yeah, you age gracefully. So that's what you have done. Of course, uh, I must say mm -hmm. that uh, uh, there are things like cancer, diabetes, high blood pressure, which also come with age. Mm. I think I must say uh, I'm lucky that I you have none, uh, of, none of those. Yes. Wow. Um, but some of them come because of uh, lifestyle. Yes. Uh, which In I fact, think according to the number of doctors I've interviewed, yes, they are hundred <coughs> percent come due to lifestyle. No, there are some which are inherited, like really? diabetes. Yes, it may be in the it may be in the family. Mm. Yes, uh, high blood pressure may be a result of circumstances you are in, you know. Uh, but uh, uh, lifestyle is very important; contributes a lot mm. to, to to these things. Yes. Wow! Mm. Congratulations on your recognition. Thank with you. The big man. Thank you very much. How does it feel? How did it feel to you? I felt honored and loved. Okay. And. Um, I pay tribute to those who nominated me who and thought, about, thought you. about me. Uh, in this world, we always think we are important because in this world, we are all very selfish. We think about ourselves. Mm. So at times you say, well, I'm very important and maybe I deserve this or the other. But when people come out and say, you know, they... they, they, they they nominate you when you don't know, you know, uh, and possibly approach you over something and you, s you think about it. Mm. Uh, so it's a good feeling that okay. people feel that you made that contribution and uh, they are nominating you in good faith. I think it's a wonderful feeling that you get. Personally, do you think you are worth it? You can never determine your worth. It is for others to say. Uh, but you know why like, they like, give the, like I say. You know why they give out these medals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah they recognize know. people that have exceptionally yes. served this country, That's and the class of the medal itself that was given to you. Mm. Do you feel you are worth it? Because you know your track record best. Yeah. Okay. I, I will still insist that uh, you can never tell who you are. It's other people to tell who you are. Mm. You, as an individual, should try to know what you want in life and go for it. Mm. Uh, you should have certain targets you want to achieve in your life and see that as you achieve them, you see their milestones in your life. Okay. So for people to say you are worth this, I think they see what you've done, those milestones, those achievements, mm. 
and uh, that's the basis. But we are so many in the world, and people achieve so much. So it, it's, it's really, I, I think the worth is because people have said so, not because I feel so. Okay. Yes. Who is this man, Waswa Balunya, the professor, principal mobs? Briefly tell us. Yes, uh, Waswa Balunya was born in Iganga. Uh, my father was a teacher who turned into an, an administrator okay. and uh, became the chief administrative officer of the Busoga region, the bigger Busoga region. Yeah. Uh, he was killed in 1972 during okay. the Idi Amin period, so we, don't, we never buried him. And uh, our father left uh, something in our home, the word Atariye Karangula meaning whoever will not work hard. You can interpret it in many ways. Yes. Uh, so College, okay. where there was the famous Father Grimes, mm. we pay tribute. Yeah, products of Father Grimes. Yeah, you pay tribute to him. So I want to do law in Makere. I don't get law. So, um, um says go to India do law. Okay. So I go to India. I found law at the second degree, and uh, I I get I got into uh, the Bachelor of Commerce. Now, at that time, we had no idea about uh, career. I mean, you just said everybody is doing law, go to do law. Mm. You know, the, it was at, at that moment in time the best course you would get into Makerere. Was it From the art side, yes. Uh, very few people knew what Bicom was. Bicom was not popular. Though it was there in Makerere at that time. Yeah. Because it was established in 1975. I returned to Uganda in uh, 1982 and uh, I had uh, always wanted to be a banker but somehow in my, during my MBA uh, I, I decided to get into teaching. I, I thought teaching was the most honorable profession. So where do you start teaching? In Makerere. How did they allow you, having been a product of India? Yeah, that was a, an issue, very big issue. It took time. I can imagine. It took time for me to get into Makerere because uh, we, we have been socialized as Africans mm. to believe that India is not good. Okay. And yet India is such a powerful country. India has such a variety of educational programs. Uh, I mean, we can't even be near them mm. at all. So... How do you, pay? we were looking at, you were telling me how it took you some time yeah, to get into, to penetrate into Makerere University yes, yes. as a teacher. As a teacher, yes. So how do you win uh, it? Uh, I think I got in there because uh, the Department of Commerce didn't have teachers. I think if they had teachers, I would not have got in. Nowhere. Yeah. But we were short of teachers. I think they bought four teachers only. Uh, they had some part-timers. Mm -hmm. So, I think possibly, I can't say, but the decision of um, the head of the department recommend me, Professor Tikoro, may he rest in peace, 
uh, they, they had scarcity of people and I think there was it's a possible he said let's try this young man he's trying to teach you know and in the early 1980s with the master's degree were not so many okay yeah so th that was the opportunity I joined Makerere and um, uh, as I said, I was shaped a lot by one, my family, yes. my, my parents, mm. especially my mother, a very tough woman, uh, by, by society I was living in, uh, the schools I went to, I went to Muir Primary, I went to Namsegali. Mm. Uh, there's a lot of culture you pick in there, and um, then India. Now, so Makere accepts you. Yes. You enter, how do you localize there and become the Professor Valunya that we know? When I got into Makere, uh, lecturers in Makere teach 10 hours a week. Mm. That's why. Then or now? After Even now. Okay. I mean, your workload, mm. you are 42 hours in a week, are divided into teaching, research, supervision. But essentially, the biggest task is teaching. teaching. So you teach 10 hours a week. Mm. So what do you do the rest of the time? So I would go to, to school. Uh, today you teach three hours. The next day you teach five. Another day you teach two. And you finished. Mm. So I was wondering, what do I do with my time? The rest of the time. Yeah. Uh, fortunately, Chive uh, Jinja, whom I told you was my maternal uncle, they had a business. Mm. This was Sapoba Bookshop Press in Katwe. Uh, so since I had done accounting, I would walk down there, go and do some books for them, and uh, I became part of that system. But to me, that is not what I wanted. I wanted to teach. Mm. And the money was solely to end my career. But okay. I had this passion for teaching. So. Uh, after a few years, we realized that we were a department of commerce in the faculty of social sciences. So at that time it was under social sciences? Yes. But commerce? Yeah, department because of Because I was going to ask you, yes. was it, were you at FEMA? Because no, 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 no. FEMA is a new thing. It's a new thing. Okay. So this is the department of commerce under social sciences. Mm. And um, I realized that we could not succeed in that group. You know, because the most prominent people there were politi polit politicians, political science, scientists, uh, Professor Nsimambi, Mamdani, mm. and these were people you talked about. Yes. So we requested that we should become a faculty, okay. and it was approved in 1986. Mm -hmm. uh, Professor Tikoro became the dean, and I was appointed head of the department three years into service. Okay. That was too soon. Mm. But uh, possibly I had. I was ambitious, I think. I wanted to do more. I wanted to, to teach. So I remembered when I was in India, the place where we used to stay, there was a big block next, and people, the students would study in the evening. Mm. So I went back to India and explored, and I found out that you could study in the evening. So I came to Makerere, proposed to have uh, evening studies. Oh, boy. This great institution is so conservative that it took us five years to adopt it, to approve it, yes. So it was approved in 1991 and we started. When we started, we... So the idea of evening classes in Makerere yeah, is a baby of Mwaswa mm. Balunya. I led the team. Okay. Yeah, I led the team. The ideas were mine. Mm. And I led the team that did that. So we start, and uh, thanks to Dean then, uh, Juko was Dean of Faculty of Law, who, you know, outspoken gentleman, he supported this. He said, why don't you allow these fellows to start? Professor Juko, I think I've heard of them. Yes, yes. yes. So we started, and uh, I must say it was a runaway success, because in my projection then, if we had 86 students, we would break even. Mm. Uh, we had over 200 applications, we admitted them, 125 turned up, and they said the rest is history. Go on. Now, I became dean when I had about 220 students. Dean of? With the Faculty of Commerce. Okay. 1991. 
one degree program, the Bachelor of Commerce. So, because they didn't want us to start an evening program in Bachelor of Commerce, we started the Bachelor of Business Administration. Mm. Uh, with 220 students, Makere at that time had about 4,000 students. In total. In total. So, we had about 5% of the number of students. But by 1996-97, we had over 1,000 degree students in the three-year program. In the three-year program at the, the Faculty of Commerce? Yeah. Not now, almost near what the whole university had at total. Uh, what they would admit yes, in annually. Mm -hmm. yeah. The university had 4,000 students, about that, yes. at that time. Mm -hmm. And we had 200. Yes. So about less than 5%. Mm -hmm. Now, by 1996, 97, we, are, we surpassed the limit, the, 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 the 1,000 mark of students. So this attracted the Minister of Education then, Naomi Shaga. He came and said, what are you guys doing here? Everybody's talking about you. Because we are generating money, we, we, we had increased salaries of our staff and... Uh, as a faculty? As a faculty, yes. Mm -hmm. So this scheme was adopted by everybody in the university. Makerere changed from that time. Okay. Uh, so, Honor Amanya Mshega comes and says, I'm going to give you Nakawa. I think you're going to make a lot of transformation. So what was at Nakawa then? The National College of Business Studies. Okay. Yeah, they were people having diplomas. Mm. So, and they administered the colleges of commerce. There are five colleges of commerce around the country. Tororo, Soroti, Pakwach, mm. um, I think, Sudira, um, maybe Kabale. So we take over this institution and uh, as they say, the rest is history. If, uh, uh, if it was not for COVID, yes. we would now have about 20,000 students. What many of us thought, mm. that probably MOBS was once a faculty at McKinley, that was indeed, it, indeed, indeed it was, the Faculty of Commerce. When we went to Nakawa, we had been trying to change the word Faculty of Commerce to McKinley University Business School. So it's the Faculty of Commerce yes, that, that went and got combined with the business... And, and swallowed. It swallowed the business school. The, no, the National College of College Business of Studies. Business studies. Yeah. You, should, you, should, you should use these words uh, properly. Yes. The word business, the, the business school is... Will cause me problems. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. So the Faculty of Commerce yeah. is what was shifted from McKinley. But when it reached Nakawa, yes, it, it swallowed the National so no College, College of Business of Studies and, and became McKinley University, University Business School. Business School. Yes. You were the first principal. I was the first director. First director. Yes. Now, when we got into Nakawa, mm. whenever there is change, people resist it. Okay. So we got into Nakawa, the resistance, but... From who? The students and the staff. The there was a principal in, in Nakawa. Mm. You are telling him, no, you're no longer a principal, you're going to be a lecturer. Wow, I would you, resist as well. Yes. Mm. So it wasn't easy, but it, we did it very well, very well, and it worked excellently. Uh, we set up committees, mm. students, programs, staffing, all this, and we said, give us ideas. Now, we had our ideas, but we said, give us ideas. They came with ideas, we sat down, we talked, we did everything possible, and um, uh, we, 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 the, the, the problem was kind of managed. We were both soft and tough at the same time. If you did fit into a university system, sorry, if you fitted into a system, we supported you. And continue. To with, yeah, to continue. Yes. And we have had uh, professors there now. So you, you, you managed to handle the resistance in, in Nakawa. In Nakawa. But How about where you were coming from? That was a problem now. That became a problem. You see, we were generating money. I must say I was the best paid uh, lecturer for a long time. Yes. <laughs> Until recently when they increased salaries. I've been the best paid lecturer. And I thank God for it. But we generated this money. Okay. Yeah, we generated this money. 
what explained that is it the the, the semi autonomy that yes you got at yes. nakao yes you managed your finances well, you managed finances well the mugabite yes said that element uh, came in no 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 we were quite equitable quite equitable mm -hmm. we, we 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 had the best salaries in all universities you know we were paying more than what they pay you in makerere mm. so uh my staff were excellent they worked hard they, we generated money and um, they, they, the the school grew from we we come into Nakawa with a, a BCom and a BBA okay. and an MBA. Mm. My vision was a domination of business and management education in the country and in the region. We're benchmarking with Nairobi and Dar es Salaam. Because they were, they were more advanced were than you. us in these areas. They yes. had professors, they had PhDs, and um, we didn't have. So we, we, uh, we, our thoughts were we must be able to be better than them. Okay. So we started numerous programs. Today we have 23 undergraduate business programs. At degree level? Yeah. 14 masters and a PhD program. Okay. Uh, our numbers of students, if, if it had not been for COVID, mm. today would be 20,000 plus. How many are you now? Maybe about, this, you know, this first year we've admitted 2,000. We normally, we normally have about 8,000 students. How has been the relationship between you and Makere? It was not good, I must tell you. Uh, I resigned from the directorship uh, because of money. What they, do you mean? They were asking me to pay some money I, I didn't agree with. I, I generate the money, I didn't have control over it. So that I'm told to pay and I say I'm not going to pay that and I went away. And uh, I must thank His Excellency the President. He asked me to go back. Who asked you to pay? Big people in Makerere. We, we shouldn't it? personalize it. You okay, know? when was that? For us, this is ninety. This is ninety-eight, I think. So they asked you to start remitting some money. No, no, no. We put up a building, mm. which in our view cost a certain amount X, and they wanted us to pay X plus something. Okay. So I refused to pay it. Had you grown wings before your seniors, before your it, father, Makerere University? No, that's, that's I mean, not, you moved. That's Had you now grown wings? No, 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 that's principle. Those are principles. At one point, we even had you wanted to secede. Yes, 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 for a long time, yes. Why? Because we didn't... Uh, Makerere is, is, is a very conservative university. Universities have changed. So... You could, you could not get uh, programs are, are approved uh, and this, this is still not, not as bad. We must, I must pay tribute to Professor Nawangwe. He's greatly improved our relationship. At some stage I even refused to go for the graduations in Makerere. I will not go there. In the public eye, mm. actually what I was saying is what was the view mm. that you grew wings. Mo no. you mobs, not you, Professor Balunyo, no. but mobs grow yeah, wings. But the, 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 Let us look at it this way. They say is the fish rots from the, the head. <laughs> is it true mobs grow wings after no. developing at Nakawa? No. We simply had different management styles. So how did you sort out whatever was not going on well between you and Makere? Because there is a time where the, 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 the news that you wanted to secede was so common. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was very common. That's How did true. you finally get That's through? true. We, we thought that the best thing to do was to separate from Makere at that time. But I must tell you this. In national interests, mm. mobs being part of Makere yes. serves this country better. Okay. If I'm selfish, I'll tell you I want to run my show, I want to run a good institution, I would say let moves be separate from Makere. Naturally, how important is Makere to moves? How important is moves to Makere? 
Mobs is a child of Makere University. Makere Historically. Uni yeah, Makere University gave birth to this child. Mm -hmm. This child became in, grew up, became independent. Uh, Makere has about uh, 36 to 40,000 students. When you add Mobs, mm -hmm. which is a, approximately 20,000, it takes you to 56,000. Now, if we are, if we are, if we we have a number of students in which is more than half of what Makerere has, mm. you know, it's, it's 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 not easy. I mean, you, you need to listen to these people. They have something to say. They have a story to tell. How did they get there? Does that take away your history that you are? No, no, it does, it does, no, no, we, we are, are full in the academically. Mm. What we are not is financially and administratively. That's, where I, was, that's yes. where I was going. Yes. Do you remit some money? Some, to yes, we do. We do. do. Do you share stuff? No. Do you, as the director of this, one would look at as faculty, mm. go for, do you report to Professor Nawangwe as other principals and deans? For academic purposes. The law has said MOBS will offer Makerere University degree programs. So for purposes of academics, we report to Makerere. That is all that you share? Yeah. But financi financially and, ad and administratively, no. Can my friend Professor Nawangwe yes. suspend a lecturer who is misbehaving in MOBS? No. No, that's my responsibility. So how much power does he have over movies? Academically. If, uh, for instance, um, a lecturer was caught cheating in an, an ex or facilitating che cheating in a career exam, he can say, I don't want that lecturer. So are you like other schools that are under McCary? No, we are different. We are very, we are different. Different. You know, Makere has got colleges and principals. Exactly. But uh, they do not have the authority that the principal MOBS has. Okay. Yeah. Because they are purely academic principals. Me, I have a responsibility over students, over all kinds of things. All the administrative functions, I'm the accounting officer. Makere has a vote, I have a vote. Wow. Yeah. You're independent? Financially. And uh, administratively. Okay. Yeah. Makere must be regretting letting you go. He didn't let us go. What happened was this. No, giving you the autonomy. It, 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 they didn't. If it was Makere to do it, they would have simply stifled us. And we would be like the colleges. But because we were out there growing, mm -hmm. we were out there doing something which was exceptional in society, Increasing access to education, lowering fees. Mm. Uh, government noted that really these people are doing something good. So government came up with a law to give us that autonomy. Okay. Yeah. And of course, at that time, the powers be at that time didn't like it. At they, yeah, yeah, yeah. they even went to court to interpret whether this was right or not. You know, you can imagine. Even when the president appointed me, somebody went to court, says is the president right? I said, well, there is a law which provides him to be appoint, appointed principal. Uh, yeah. So you have survived through thorns. Yeah. <laughs> but that's life. Life which has no challenges, not So exciting. currently, what is your relationship with Mackay University? Excellent. Because they have left you to enjoy what you should enjoy? No, no, no. I think the... It's not leaving us, it's because we are able to sit down on the table and discuss. We are, there is mutual respect and recognition. I must say that at some stage we were not recognized, we weren't respected. And uh, what did you expect us to do? Because they wanted you to be under them, direct. Yeah, that was an issue. Yet you wanted to run out and go. We wanted to be able to manage our money. I can't make the money. I wake up at 4 a.m., then you tell me how to use my money. No. But that's what is done by other faculties under the university. Yeah, but they don't earn as much as we do. They don't. They earn less, less, little money. 
So you say currently the current administration has recognized you and you feel all is okay. We fine. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Mm. So what is the situation at MOBS as we talk currently? What are your challenges? Uh, we thank government. They gave us a higher salary. What is your view about the higher education sector in Uganda? Because this is where you have been since 1982 when you joined Makere, according to what yes, you have shared. Yes, yes, yes. You have yes. been in the higher education sector. Yes. Currently, how would you describe it? Uh, government of Uganda came up with the methods of regulating various things, including higher education. Mm. We have the National Council of Higher Education, which is our regulator. It's done a wonderful job in terms of regulating institutions. But on the other hand, government has not come up to support it properly. Government has not supported the higher education sector? The, higher edu the, the National Council of Higher Education properly. Okay, how? Government has created uh, an institution. Oh, government has got medical schools. Mm. Makerere, Mbarara, Guru. And they are not given adequate facilities. You may remember, dentistry in Makerere was closed for some time, some a few years back. Mm. But how can you close a program in a government university? Because Over facilitation. Yes, because it was not properly equipped. Okay, so you tell me to regulate. I regulate. I'll close you, which they did. Yeah. But should but government institutions should not be closed. So there is a there is a problem. Of let me call it streamlining uh, higher education in government institutions. It should be streamlined. First of all, funding should be based on the programs and on the numbers of students. You know? mm. Yeah. If we need a library, let every university have a library. Uh, if we need laboratories for science, let all universities have laboratories. But if you give laboratories... Those that need it. Those, those, those that are offering those courses exactly, yes. where you need it. Mm. So the, the, national, the regulator has a problem. He comes to a government university, looks at your things and says, I, I, I can't allow you to run dentistry. Close it mm. until when you get money from government to put the facilities in place. So, yes, I think uh, the National Council for Education, our regulator, has done a great job in terms of streamlining these things. You know, um, we have a bit of issues there. We have to pay them to, 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 to inspect us, and I think to me that government should not do. It should have just paid, it should have found money for these universities to pay. Even private universities, uh, I think government should help. In uh, if you have a good idea, a good concept, you have good resources. Uh, at times, this money you pay may not, you may not have it. You, you, you said the private universities are mm -hmm. playing a very good job. Yes, yes, they do. But again, you said these are guys who are not paying their lecturers enough and no, no, they, promptly. They, so, uh, do they have the facilitation to really? give the education at the level of yourself, MOBS, Makere University, and others of that level? Let's, let us accept government can't do everything. Mm -hmm. Let's accept that. Yes. So you need the private sector to be able to play a role. But the private sector should be nurtured by government. How? F first of all, government should, 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 should sort out the public universities by providing the necessary infrastructure for them for them and ensuring that there is sufficient money to do the things they're supposed to do for instance let me just give a case mm. if if you are doing engineering in a government university there should be the facilities i, I don't know what kind of machines they use but mm. those machines should be there that they need they need mm. should be there and the teachers should be there. Proper teachers should be there. And the, as they call the 
reagents, you know, those, those consumables. <laughs> the chemicals that they <laughs> use. Yes, <laughs> should also be there, you know. So that's the starting point. So when you go to a private university, you must be able to benchmark with a government university. So to me, government should appreciate the private sector by doing a few things. One, mm -hmm. provide library facilities for them. For free? These are national resources. But these are guys who come up with their capital to start Library things. resources and does not mean money. a li library. Library resources does not mean a library. Okay. It means the resources, the books. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Government should at least give books to, to the private sector, universities, and should provide them with money for research. Those two. The rest, let them, f let, let them figure it out. Let me get you perfectly yeah, right. Yeah, yes. The government should somehow fund private universities. Research in private universities. In areas of research. Yes, and library. Right. So, we have universities that don't even have 15 classrooms, lecture rooms. Just one block and there is a big billboard or signpost reading <laughs> so, 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 so. Kamukama University. Yes. What is your view about that? Is that the private sector you really pride in? University is, is not about brick and mortar. That is the excuse, by the way, that has come up. No. Many years back, National Council for Education required universities to have football fields. Mm. I've been to universities in the U.S. and they're on one block. They have the football field. The one block and it goes up. So why do you want me to have acres of land? So, to me, imagine if you didn't have space at MOBS, where would you put the 20,000 and the numbers that you're looking at to come? If I had money, I would go up. You don't have to buy upstairs. But you, you, you see, well, Professor, you're contradicting yourself. No, no, I'm not. You, you said these people should at least present an image of being at the same level with the universities yes. in the government. And line. it's not about brick and mortar. It's not about buildings. The, 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 the education system is changing so fast. If you say this is Davis Kamukama University, yes. in my head I should look at you as somebody with capacity to be like Makerere, like Mubs, like Chambogo. With buildings. Exactly. Uh, I mean, I, I don't want to be abusive, mm. but I will tell you, I know of some universities, beautiful buildings, mm. but the, the, the output is not as good as my stupid looking old buildings in Nakawa. So to me I'm saying, today, maybe as we speak now, mm. online teaching the thing. is getting stronger and stronger. In some universities abroad, it is dominating. In MOOCs, this year we are teaching 50% online. Next year it's going to increase a little bit more. So why do I need buildings? Okay. But of course you need, <laughs> you know, uh, they say, uh, you, you need to see something, you know. Definitely. You need that impress, impressive thing. Mm. So what I'm saying is that these, these universities which don't have uh, big buildings, should be able to, 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 to indicate what niche are they in that does not call for buildings. How efficient can you be online and compete with people that are doing it the hardware way? It's very efficient. For example, in areas where somebody needs the laboratory work. It's, it's very efficient. Of course, where, do you, where there is need for physical things, they, yes. must, they must take place. Generally, what is that missing link you see in our higher education sector as a senior there? It's not what, um, it's not what is missing. I, I feel that the regulation is a little too tight. Really? Yeah, I, I may be contradicting myself, but I know why I'm saying that. The regulator is doing a great job. Otherwise, you would have all kinds of universities around. Mm -hmm. 
and you now and again here they've closed this. Yes. They even closed my Busoka University. You know, uh, for good reason. Uh, Actually, a number have closed. Yeah, a number have closed. Even uh, recent, I think last week they yeah, used to be Lugazi University yeah. sometime. Yeah. No, recently they've closed another university in the last two, three weeks. And Some they, people have graduated and their degrees have been announced. <laughs> <laughs> Those are challenges. But um, uh, it's a good thing to be able to standardize education. Mm. But I'm saying the parameters, for instance, it is a requirement that for you to have a university lecturer, that person must have a PhD. This country is not yet ready for it. And yet we must teach. Because yes. we are producing the children. Yes. The children are coming up. So we need to be able to put a mechanism in place to have those PhDs studying. Mm. Yeah. Where do they base that? Sorry? Where do they best to come up with it's that? It's a best practice. To have PhD. Yes. So lecture at university for PhD. I mean, as the world changes, mm. you may remember, uh, you may know, you not remember because you, 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 you didn't face it, that uh, our, some of our very famous vice chancellors didn't have PhD. Same as Akajubi. Had a master's degree. Asavia Wande had a master's degree. Mm. Most of the teaching staff in Makerere up to about 2000 had master's degrees. And they did a good job. And they did a good job, yes. So there is no case study that it is a PhD that will give us what we want in a lecture. Well, increasingly, globally, mm. Mm, like countries like the US have moved to that. But they, they are able to do it. You see, what I'm saying is we should, if we say to teach in a university, government university must have a PhD, government must provide resources for that person to do the PhD. What do you make of our education sector in general? Where are you for? I'm talking about kindergarten to where you are mm -hmm. at the tertiary level. This is a little controversial, mm -hmm. uh, but these are my views. Yes. I feel that uh, the problems we have in society, the problems of poverty, the problems of backwardness, mm. the problems of uh, lack of jobs are being created by the nature of our education system. That's what so many people say, yeah. even those in charge of sh shaping and reshaping the education sector. Why? But today, you get into primary school mm. at age six. Get out age plus seven, 13. Yes. Uh, the figure, I'm not sure whether this is the right figure, 1.2 million or 1.8 million enter primary school. Yes. 600,000 finish. Finish P7. What happens to the 1.2? They drop out. Mm. 50% of them girls. By when the girl gets out and traditionally starts developing breasts, mm. marry her off. Because she's not in school. Or given the changing nature of our society, she'll get pregnant. Yes. So she's 14, she delivers a baby. It's not a baby, she's delivering poverty. By the time she's 20, she has four children. By the time she's 28, she's a grandmother. Mm. That is if her children follow into her steps. They definitely will, because they, they don't go to school. So that is perpetuating poverty in this country. How do you relate it to education if it's to solve it? India has standard one to standard 12. Yes. So the girl who goes into, into school, when she's six years old, she gets out when she's 18 years old. By the time you're 18 years old, you are old enough to deliver a baby. But you're also intelligent enough to know to what you want. To know what you want. Mm. 
Okay? So I think that we need as a country to look at that and get rid of this primary and secondary thing merge it together. Primary and, and secondary merged together. In fact, while at Namutumba, yes. you mentioned something, P7 should be scrapped. Yes, yeah, that's it. Somebody picked interest. Yes. <laughs> so did I. Yes. So you want P7 scrapped? I want, it's not a P7. You know when you say P7? Mm. I want primary scrapped. Primary scrapped? To be merged with secondary. Well, that's, this is my view, this is mm -hmm. my feeling. Mm -hmm. That when you merge these two, you are going to have a student stay longer and get out when he or she has matured. Okay? Because the statistics will tell you those who finish are 600,000. How many enter A level? Mm. How many enter all uh, sorry, uh, final university? You know? So you want the, 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 to, to us to adopt the India-like something or from P1 to, to senior 6 non-stop? Uh -huh. To think through it. No, no. P1 to senior 4. Non -stop. Merge those two. Yes. Yeah. And reintroduce or introduce mm. certain technical and vocational studies in that street, in those schools. Have you shared this information, this kind of idea with anyone among the stakeholders that are concerned? The forum doesn't exist. Though now there is that Education Review Commission mm. uh, led by Honor Manyam Shega. Yes. He has asked me to go. Uh, I'll go and put my views there. You are only looking at the factor of age. Um, I'll give you a background. Okay. I said, when you look at poverty, Mm? Mm. Our poverty is a, a function of low education. Yes. Our poverty is a function of a high growth population rate. Our high growth population rate is coming from the way we, we, we use education. Mm. That children, the, these people who are delivering babies, age 14, 15, 16 years old, they are delivering children. A university graduate may even deliver at the age 30. Yes. Yeah. So I'm saying, can we make these girls more responsible? And the boys, of course. Keep them in school more? Longer. As we inculcate more knowledge and vision. And, and as they grow old. So two, those two things. In the academic sense, is there any problem it will solve? Oh, yes. Socially, I've understood you. Yes, yes. Uh, it's going to address poverty. If these girls who are dropping out of school, mm -hmm. first of all, you must also make sure that they stay in school. Yes. Uh, so they, sh they should not drop out. When they drop out, the next thing is go have a baby. Mm -hmm. you, a, any, any grandparent, any parent would like to say, daughter, deliver baby. Mm -hmm. it, I mean, it's just normal. Yes. So you, you are pleased to have grandchildren. But when you have grandchildren, when your children are not educated because you didn't have the money, there is a problem. You are adding to the line and stock of poor people in the country. Yes. And I'm saying, first of all, stop that production of babies mm. or reduce it. You see? And when you reduce that, you are also going to reduce the number of poor people. So how will it be? Like after my P7, I get a, remote, a report Promoted to senior this one. This is not P7. You, we, we, possibly, we need to say standard one, standard two, up to standard 12. Thank you so much, Professor. And in there, introduce vocations. Technical kind of education. Yeah, some degree of them. Well, then those who finish that standard 12, those who are in science should go to the technical and vocational institution. There was so much hope that business courses mm. would really help us touch the unemployment problem in Uganda. This is the arena where you are. Yeah. How much have you done as the people in the business course sector to contribute to this? You're right. 
the business education courses occupy about 30 to 40 percent of education institutions yes. at the higher education level. Uh, they take up that big number. We have your graduates who don't have jobs. Uh, our graduates, most of our I'm not talking about mobs, but yeah, we okay, have okay, graduates yeah, 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 yeah. from you're right, the you're right. business education you're, people you're right. who have no jobs. Yeah, because of mindset. I don't know what 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 you thought when you were growing up when you were in the university. Hmm? But me, I thought that I must get a job in a bank. The people who are graduating today are hoping to get a job in government, in big banks. Because business is still foreign to us as Ugandans and indeed Africans. What are you guys teaching? We teach them we teach the startup of business. But you have to think a lot. For 300 years, Africans were traded as slaves to go and work as labor. You are dehumanized. Thereafter, the colonial big powers mm. came in and all they wanted from you are your resources. Yes. Not for you to use them. Mm -hmm. Three, because you don't know your history, you don't have a script of it. You've never written it down. Even an experiment you did, you don't have a record of it. So you are not able to develop science. So, what is business to you? It's foreign. What you know is that you must eat, so you must have a garden and continue to produce from your backyard. We are still locked in there. We must move out of that, but it's not easy. It's not easy. Is the education then helping us? It, those are, those are because part these of, are the things that those are part of the reforms we must incorporate in the education uh, uh, sector. Okay. To be able to get continuous, we are doing. We are tr we're trying a lot, but you see the pride of you, a child coming from deep down in Ipsoga you know, getting into a, a government university, mm -hmm. getting a degree, his pride would be to wear a tie and work in an office, not to go on the street and sell milk. And yet if he went to the street and sold milk, possibly in a year's time he will be earning more than somebody wearing a tie. How are we going to change that mindset through training, through university, to a Ugandan boy or girl that after this degree, go start a charcoal stall somewhere, you will be better. How are we going to, what is that niche or ingredient? That, that is a mindset we must incorporate in what we're doing. Government is talking about it, but we're not actually doing it. Thank you so much, Professor. Thank you very much. What would be your last message to a young man who is choosing a career? You being successful in your career as a teacher, what would be your message to a young man, young woman, who is thinking of a career to take? By the way, while we talked about uh, business being foreign to us, mm. uh, the developed countries have not helped us to get out of our poverty. You know, like I told you, the slave trade, the mm. colonization, now the neo-colonization yes. is continuing to keep us there. Mm. So to, 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 to the young man today, I would say, first of all, understand who we are as a country as individuals. Mm. Who, who are you? Who we are as a country? Why haven't, why aren't we growing? What are the constraints? We don't know them. We don't know them. Mm. So, so we need to discover what they are. And this cannot be discovered by just talking. It can only be discovered through research. Okay. So our professors have a job to do to tell us why we are not doing what we are supposed to be doing. So let's discover who we are as a country, understand what is preventing us from growing, and then work towards getting people to produce, to be efficient in production, that's mm. productivity, mm. and to be able to, to unblock through negotiations with Western countries, 
and to the China to be able to give us an opportunity to also produce and sell so that we can, as a world, transform together. Okay. There is need for this. We need in this globe, in this world, a new way of doing business which does not discriminate you know, a certain group of people, mm. which does not disadvantage a certain group of people, like Africans are disadvantaged. I've heard many people saying African leaders, there is no problem with African leaders. They know what they want to achieve, but they cannot achieve it because of the constraints that are imposed on them externally. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you very much. His name is Professor Waswa Balunya. He is the principal Makerere University Business School.